Good morning and welcome to the walk off, everybody. I'm Scott Belford, joined by Adam Mack. Look at us, buddy. We got our uh, our, our Buffalo baseball hey, shirts yeah, on here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so great. Mine's <laughs> the like. We are um, in our mailbag episode right now. So what we do is we go through the last week's comments, questions, messages, and kind of address them and move forward type of thing. We do thank all of you very much who have been so interactive. We had literally 30 plus comments on our last episode where we kind of addressed the fact that the Blue Jays were in on Corey Seager and that maybe they are putting that lefty bat far higher up on their needs list than maybe we had anticipated and that maybe there is some big time money to be spent and maybe Freddie Freeman does make some sense. Everybody had an opinion on that, so we'll get to that. Um, let's dive in here, buddy. All right, so first one comes from YouTube. This is uh, from the user Just Me. It says, to be honest, it is silly and irresponsible to speculate on rumors, etc., with nothing really concrete to back them up. If this and if that just gets people raising expectations that will lead to ire if it doesn't happen. Ugh. Okay, so to start with, Just Me actually watches this pretty regularly because he does have comments pretty regularly. And sometimes they are negative comments. I will say that he has also defended us in negative comments towards us. So he's kind of a give and take sort of guy. I also know that (laughs) speculation is... He doesn't pull his punches. And speculation is one thing that has driven this man nuts before. It's something (laughs) that he has commented on before. I will say that these Freddie Freeman thoughts of ours are not completely unfounded. Jeff Passan did come out and say that they were big in on Corey Seager. Of course, the the money and the years that they were prepared to go was not disclosed. We just guessed that if they were actually contenders for Seager after the Rangers get him for 10 years, $325 million, they had to have been around six, seven years, and they had to have been pretty close to the money, which was $32.5 million a year. So that worked out to, we figured if they were just on the low end, six years, 32.5, that they would be around $195 million in on Corey Seager, which does equal pretty close to what the rumors are about Freddie Freeman wanting. The lefty bat thing does work. Now, obviously, positionally, we already talked about Freeman, not a perfect fit by any means, and we'll get into that more. However, just me is right. We are 14 days into a lockout here, and it's not like we have piles of baseball news to to sift through here. So, yes, we were getting a little speculative. We were having a little fun with it. And if that annoyed you, our apologies to you, though, just me. Thank you for at least continuing to watch and follow along, even when we do annoy you with shit like that. (laughs) Anything to add, Adam? (laughs) You know what? Good comments, bad comments. They all help us with the YouTube algorithm. So... Bring it on, honestly. It's, uh, yeah, it's appreciated. Supporting Absolutely. the channel either way, and it's uh, it's good talking points all, all the same. Yeah. So, um, all right. So next one also from YouTube here. Scott Farr says, and this is an interesting interesting one. He says, everybody talks about the Jays re-signing Bo and Vlad, but if we are lucky, we will sign we will re-sign Bo, but Vlad is gonna get or gonna want four hundred plus million. And the Jays are not going to pay, so be prepared for Vlad to walk. We can get other productive players for for much less money. Vlad is better at first than third, but he's still a defensive liability in the field. Not great, but not bad. Freeman is a superior defender and great offensively. So the main takeaway from this is be prepared for Vlad to not be a Blue Jay for life, is what he's saying. Which is an interesting take. Not a lot of Blue Jays fans have put much thought into the idea of 2025 season going by and then Vladimir Guerrero Jr. leaving for big money on another team. It is totally a possibility, however. Um, I mean, cue up the... Don't, uh, don't the like to think from, about it. <laughs> cue up the clip from The Princess Bride where he's saying inconceivable, right? Yeah. That yeah, is, exactly. Uh, yeah. That has been our I don't think you know what our, that word means. Our thoughts on uh on Vladdy leaving. Um what do you He's think? right. Okay, Vladdy is going to take probably who knows, 
if they sign him right away, yeah, he's going to want $400 million. But if they wait another couple of years, he could be at half a billion. Like, who knows where these prices continue to go, especially if we watch the luxury tax go mm -hmm. up. Now, one thing he said that I don't take as foregone conclusion is that Rodgers will not spend the money. There's a lot of reasons for Rodgers to invest that money into Vladimir Guerrero Jr., a man who's still only 22 years old, doesn't turn 23 until the uh, 2022 season. This is a guy who has roots in Canada, was born in Montreal. His dad played for the Expos for years. There are still Vladimir Guerrero senior jerseys everywhere throughout this country. Yep. I think if you just take a quick look at the predominant jerseys at Rogers Center when you go to watch a Blue Jays game they're all Vladdy Jr. jerseys I think there's a lot of money on the merch side of things I think there's a lot of money to be made just on the peripherals before you even t take into account his value on the field now we don't have a crystal ball and obviously just me is just shaking his head right now because this is all speculation say, just me this you is all speculation a couple minutes <laughs> but you don't know what's going to happen and it's very true and the way the jays front office has set this team up and this organization up is that they are able to lose a guy here and there and it would be really devastating to this fan base to watch vladimir guerrero jr walk away however there are some big time prospects coming up that are on the low end of the organization and when i say that i'm talking low a ball right so yeah. guys like aralvis martinez guys like manuel beltre who actually just had a big boon in his value manuel beltre keep an eye out for this kid he's 19 and he continues to raise up the hitting ranks which is very impressive for a 19 year old kid aralvis martinez same sort of thing uh you look at gabriel moreno a guy who they're trying to transition to a catcher half third baseman right type of idea mm -hmm. maybe smarts wise sports intelligence if you're just going to look at uh, the front office business side of things maybe it does make sense to lock up Bo and let Vladdy walk but that makes zero sense also to just take the qualifying offer picks so could we see Vladdy even traded down the road? I don't know. Like, this is a crazy idea that I hadn't put much thought into until who, – who's the YouTube comment guy here who, who this brought from, this up? This is from Scott Farr. Scott, right. Very – you know, Scott, You when you see a name like Scott, you just know this guy knows baseball. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, no, I do think that – it is something that we should be prepared to at least consider um, the potential of Vlad maybe not being a lifelong J just as a brace for impact kind of a, a strategy. I do think that all BS aside, uh, Bo is a better baseball player. Right, if He might be a more all-round better baseball player that said vladdy made some real strides positionally last look, year I'm, look i'm gonna take we're just gonna take combative sides on this subject for sure okay. let me just say this up front for sure i want i'll switch my phone plan to rogers if it means keeping vlad a blue jay for life okay <laughs> and anybody that lives in alberta knows exactly what kind of a sacrifice i'm offering yes absolutely <laughs> um let me table the same offer, Rogers, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, if we're going to invest half a billion dollars in any player, though, I would rather it be a top five shortstop than a top three first baseman. Yeah, and that's probably a fair take. And that is one thing positionally, if you look at Vladdy, is probably his Achilles heel is that first base is not the same sort of value on the field as let's say, like you said, shortstop or catcher or some of well, these guys that we just speculated on the Freddie Freeman contract mm -hmm. that he's rumored to be getting right at around 185 the... million, six 100... years is kind of the rumors. Yes. Right. So like 30 ish million a year for, a and first he's 32, he's, but so he's, he's one of the top old, first basemen in the league. If not one the of best, the best exactly. first baseman, in the league, right? World Series champion, all this. Yep. So I, that's a lot of money to pay forty-five million a year potentially for a first baseman. 
I don't know, man. I mean, Vlad is a phenomenal hitter, probably a top three hitter in the league, arguably. Mm -hmm. Bobachet might be a better hitter. It's going to be interesting to see how he progresses come 2022, especially when you think about how much less pressure is on Bo now that he's positionally a little more sound. Like, he was really, really getting beat up yeah. about his his defense mm -hmm. in 2021, both him and, of course, it didn't help that, that Biggio just wasn't as sound at third base as maybe the front office thought he could be. So that left side of the infield was a bit of a felt like bad. It felt like a, a, a black hole mm -hmm. in April and May, especially. And I know a lot of us before we were pulling our hair out about the bullpen, we're pulling our hair out about the errors on that left side of the infield. So I think that now that Bo has kind of settled down and that's one thing he didn't allow one error in all of August. And he, I think he allowed two in September. Like I think he finished his, his, final eight weeks of the season with two errors, which is completely fantastic. It's great. Mm -hmm. If you can do that, that's around six, seven errors a year. That's that's gold glove style defensive work, right? So yep. I think we're see going to see the same thing out of Danny Jansen. You know, if you're just, if you're comfortable and you're confident in your defensive side of things, it does allow you to progress offensively and to really concentrate on the hitting side of things. Dear God, I hope they sign both of them. I'll just let's end it with that note. Okay. Please bring Bo. And Please Vlad bring forever. Vlad and Bo into the fold long term. <laughs> yes. All right. So this next one comes from our Discord. Uh, Drinker of beer wants to point out that now, finally, Justin Verlander's deal with the Astros has been officially approved by the MLB. Just for anyone that's interested. What a weird wild ride with Justin Verlander. Like it made no sense. And I, I still, I mean, there's still no word as to what exactly happened, right? He was made official to the Astros two years, $50 million, two, two weeks before the lockout happened. Middle of November, this was announced. He was one of the first big pitchers mm -hmm. to land on the market. Then all of a sudden, a few days after the lockout started, it's announced that he's officially, unofficially an <laughs> Astro. Yeah. And that he's technically back in free agency, even though if you read about it, he wasn't in free agency again. So I'm not sure if this was like a health thing or paperwork or what it's, the heck happened but now it's official again <laughs> it's weird that they were even able to make it official in the middle of the lockout right yeah like, i just feel like there has to be other teams who were really close to signing someone and ran out of time mm -hmm. right maybe had a deal on the on the table pending physical and the physical couldn't get done in time couldn't get done whatever the case was right you're telling me of the other 29 teams there isn't one other team who's going well can we also sneak through this deal that we basically yeah. agreed to? Like, I don't know. It's just, it's a weird, well, it, weird thing. It is interesting because we actually sat down with 40-man roster, Toronto Blue Jay, Hag and Danner yesterday afternoon, which we're going to release, by the way, tomorrow morning, uh, Wednesday, that'll be. And he was talking about how he was just added to the 40-man roster and he was getting Snapchats and stuff like that from... Adam Kloffenstein was teasing him. A few of the boys were teasing him because he's not, as a person, as a guy on the 40-man roster, he's not allowed to talk to anyone on the team yeah. or the organization. Like, I mean, he can like, talk to his teammates, but I, I mean, Personal trainers. Yeah, yeah personal dietitian. trainers. We were talking about the Dunedin facility and how great it is, and he was just going off about it, and he's like, not that it matters now. <laughs> like, yeah. I can't even step in the building. So yeah. it, it is interesting to, to think about how everything came to a, a complete halt. No one's allowed to talk. And Adam's correct. Maybe there was a scenario, might have even been with the Jays, who knows, where the framework is in place and they just couldn't get the physical done in time or, or the last little bit of the paperwork, and now it's at a standstill until this lockout ends. I think we could see quite a few scenarios like this throughout Major League Baseball when things kind of fire back up 
all of a sudden all of a sudden just stuff will just be like oh we were pretty much done here's yeah. what happened yeah yeah we pretty much agreed to this contract with freddie freeman can we just <laughs> sign it please <laughs> um, but uh anyway so thanks to uh drinker of beer in discord for uh following yes. up on that story and uh helps us Let stay us on all top know. of things so by the way our discord is very active and is free so if you do feel like throughout this lockout still getting your baseball fix feel free to join that's going to be a clickable link in yeah, youtube absolutely. here so yeah all right uh next one also from discord uh derek from panama uh i don't see vladdy moving to third he made great progress at first last year. They should keep him there. I hope they sign slash trade for a short-term solution at third rather than put Vladdy over on the hot corner. Okay, so to start with, Derek, thank you very much. Now, I did wish to address that we had, what do you think, buddy? 30-plus comments well, on least... whether Vlad should go to... <laughs> well, just on YouTube, to... we had 30 comments. Just on Never YouTube. mind the DMs and uh, tweets that we were getting about Absolutely, it. and people were... Very divided on this. And that was one thing Adam and I were laughing about before we even hit record here, is that there was nobody that was like, you know what? Whatever happens is fine with me. If Vladdy moves to third, I don't really feel too strongly about it. And if they keep him at first, I'm fine with it, right? Like most people were like, yes, you absolutely move him to third. You take Freddie Freeman, who's an incredible talent, plus Va Vlad's value goes up as a third baseman. And then there were people that were like, just like Derek, right? That are like, why are we moving a guy who just finally found it? <laughs> and now we're going to mess things up. So like there were plenty of both of those. <laughs> very passionately just divided um it was fun to see again this is just the speculation that that runs wild when you're in the middle of a lockout but uh just me's gritting his teeth right now <laughs> just, just go oh, just grinding away um let's just take a moment to reflect on how blessed we are as blue jays fans that we even have a friggin team to be excited about mm -hmm. right like I we couldn't be the Royals. Oh. Yeah. We could be the Royals. We could be the Colorado Rockies where we're just like, oh, where is Trevor's story going to go? What are we going to do? It's not here. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Again, just a little bit of perspective as we head into Christmas here. We've got such a young, exciting team, and it's just nice that we have, as baseball fans, have a reason to come together and to argue. So exactly especially this front office has done such a great job of laying the groundwork really and the happy. fact that there's even rumors that we could be in the bidding for a guy who's going to cost 185 million dollars to sign is very exciting stuff absolutely uh let's take a hard stance on this where do you land on this freddie freeman thing do you feel like we should if they have the opportunity to sign him move vlad to third base or kind of do a third by committee and, and split dh and first oh, or man. or would you rather see kind of like derek says and and not move him and maybe go out and get a cheaper option can i defer to the expertise of shapiro and atkins and just okay and just basically what i want to say is i want to acknowledge the fact we that... found the middle of the road guy it's adam <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, no i just whatever ends up happening i'm going to love their decision because i at this point you trust fully the trust office. them absolutely i would let them babysit my well i wouldn't let them babysit my kid but that's just bad parenting but for baseball <laughs> wise i totally trust them and yeah if they think that bringing in freeman is a good idea and that vladdy can handle third then i'm gonna for sure think that that was the right thing to do and if not then i'm gonna think that that was the. i don't know that's just i hey, love this. i'm with you I, I do feel the same way. I feel like their talent evaluation has been pretty dead on. That said, a uh, bit of a mistake thinking Biggio could handle third base. But maybe he can now. <laughs> like, is that is that crazy that maybe Biggio could be a competent third baseman? Let us know in the comments if that is an insane thought. But <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It does feel like they just kind of threw Biggio to the wolves, though, by sticking him at third base. Eh? Anyway. They're just like, you can play... Yeah, you'll figure Seven it out. Seven positions. You've never yeah. tried this one, though. Let's see if you can play eight. <laughs> what size catcher's gear are you, Kevin? Yeah, that's right. Um, all right, so let's. we got another thing about Kevin coming up, so let's let's hold okay. off on that yeah. for now. 
Um, this one comes from, this is a correction, uh, which we always appreciate. This one comes from YouTube. Uh, John. Yeah, we love says, when we're pointed out that we're wrong. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Hey, it's the only way to grow, right? Um, hey, if I didn't like hearing that I was wrong, I wouldn't have gotten married. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> but Jonathan says your info was off regarding the rule five draft, uh, which we talked about last Friday's episode. Um, it was actually the minor league rule five draft, right? Uh, meaning these players that were drafted don't need to stick with the MLB club all year. Um, they can all be assigned to minors this year. The major league rule five didn't happen because of the lockout situation. And right. the, thank you for pointing that out. Yes. Yes. Can I just say that it is stupid that they named both of them rule five if they're different rules? <laughs> Why not the rule? What six about the draft? rule six draft? Hey. Right. <laughs> right. But I'm boom. But I'm <laughs> Man. All right. Anyways, thank you for bringing that one up, Jonathan. I uh, appreciate it. And the correction is noted. Uh, okay, this last one comes in from Twitter. Um, at Spen Red says, "This is a oh this right is a funny tweet." You said so this one before you me. even yeah Go before ahead. you even get into this. So this is one, uh, and if you're a part of Blue Jays Twitter, you probably are aware of Spencer Spent at Spen Red. He's a pretty funny account. He's he's mostly making jokes. But uh, this one just made me laugh out loud, and then I, I kind of retweeted, quote tweeted it or whatever, and then he mentioned, you know, and then we started chatting or whatever. But anyways, go ahead here. So the tweet goes like this. Just let the kids believe in Santa. Some of you are in your 40s and still believe in Kevin Biggio. <laughs> This one made you laugh out loud, Scott. And yeah, it did. A, this is because this very, is me. You know, yeah. like I'm like I'm almost forty, and I still believe in Kevin Biggio. Imagine if this is how kids find out that Kevin Biggio isn't real. Oh no. my god! All those mall <laughs> cabins are just imposters. What? All those mall cabins? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. I've been sending my mom pictures of me with Kevin Biggio for her birthday every Christmas. <laughs> Which is a weird joke that only my brother will get. But anyways, um. Kevin Biggio turns 27 this April. Yeah. Is he just what no, he is? And it, he very well could be just what he is. Now, I think that there is a lot of speculation to be had about Kevin Biggio. So uh, just me, close your ears. Um, <laughs> the truth is with this guy, it's really a toss-up as to where he is as a professional ball player at this point. I know that we watched him come up. In late 2018, 2019, he looked great, great plate discipline. They made a slight adjustment. The pitching did. He, he, he adjusted with it in 2020. And then in 2021, with the position move and, and, and the neck fighting injury, some injuries, neck injury, yeah. he had a really bad year. He didn't look like who he looked like when he first came up. So is he what he was? Is he is what he is last season? Does he progress? I don't know, man. Yeah. But you brought up a really good point. He does turn 27 in April, and I know we've talked about Nate Pearson many a times on the program, and it has been brought up. Is this the year that Nate has to prove himself? Is this a do-or-die year for Nate? And honestly, when we're talking Pearson, I don't think it is yet. But if there is a do-or-die guy on this team, who has to prove himself and show what he is. I think it's safe to say it is Kevin Biggio. I don't think that they're going to give him much more rope after this season. I think that he is a part of this team. I think that they, he does get a little bit of rope when it comes to the 2022 season. However, if he comes in and 2022 is healthy and continues to struggle at the plate like he did, shows lack of discipline and struggles defensively, that's not the utility guy a team needs, right? Is that safe to say? Yeah, it's safe to say. I think definitely make or break. I think, ooh, man, would I ever, I think as a believer in Kevin Biggio, I would sure love to see him have second base all to himself to start the season. 
I think that would go a long way. It is the position he is most comfortable at. It's the position he has the most reps at. He is very versatile and able to move all over the diamond. But I think playing the hot corner really messed with him, especially when he had that, that what was it, a thumb injury mm -hmm. for the beginning of the season and he just couldn't grip the ball. I don't know, man. Like There was something I, off about him last year. I just, before we give up and sell him off for a couple prospects. A Pro, couple prospects, yeah. I would just, I would like to see what he can do under the best possible circumstances for him. So mm -hmm. let's see him come into the season healthy, no, like no injuries, and just play in second, right? And then if he continues to struggle at the plate, then you go, okay, like we got, we got to do something else. This isn't working, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. If he's... And you know what? The one thing about last year that was a little perplexing is that he just never really seemed to settle in, even though the pressure wasn't on him. I mean, mm -hmm. Tay Oscar had such a massive year last year and was just like such a great cleanup hitter for this team and just offered so much protection mm -hmm. to Vladdy and Bo in the lineup. Mm -hmm. And and even even Simeon. You know, like, it was just such a deep lineup. Biggio was slotted in at that 8 or 9 hole and still couldn't really put it together. So, fingers crossed that it was uh, injury-related and that he was getting in his own head and it was the struggles at third base and all that combination, the, the cumulative, you know, effect of, of all of those things mm -hmm. made his struggles even worse and that he can get it together. Otherwise, I'm with you though. I want to see him at second. I don't want to see him at third. Yeah, let's see him at second, and then and then let's make a decision. But I I don't I don't think it's gonna be fair to make an assessment of him, even if he is healthy, if he's coming into the season as our third baseman. Like I think we can conclusively yeah. say he is a sub at third at best. He is not mm -hmm. a third baseman. Like he'll do in a pinch, but that's it. Right. Freddie Freeman played 17 games at third base in 2017. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right. But, uh, yeah, no, I'd like to see us bring in a shortstop or a third baseman, have whoever it is play third, and then mm -hmm. let Espinal spell them at third when they need time off and let Gavin just stay at second base. And then, I... and then again, if it's a struggle, let's move on. But I think we should, yeah. at this point, give him a fair shake. I think the potential is still there, and I just think... I do, too. I just think he, it's been... He's just done so much for the organization in terms of, like, sure, I'll play there if you need me to. Yeah, 100%. So it just sucks to be like, oh, hey, we burned five years of your development selfishly because yeah. we needed you to play out a position, and now, like, see ya. Yeah. Like, that just no, I agree with you. Well with me. And I do, I do think he has a ton of potential. I do think that this is a guy who who would be a good bat on the back end of this lineup. I think that he does have the plate discipline to get on base and allow the big boys at the top of that order to to get their ribbies. We'll see how it all plays out, though. Hey, anything you know to add here, bud? This the struggles of Kevin Biggio could be a blessing in disguise when we sign him to an extension for a serious discount. Yes, agreed. All right, that's all I got for today. Okay, well, thank you very much, everybody, for all of the comments and your questions and your uh, messages. We do really appreciate it. This walk-off community continues to grow literally every single day, and we could not be more thrilled to be involved with it and kind of running the captain. Captaining? Is that a word? Yeah, Captaining sure. the ship? It is now. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, can get a hold of us on Twitter at Walk Off Podcast, on Instagram, the Walk Off Podcast, TikTok, as well as, of course, YouTube and wherever you find your podcast. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day. We uh, released the Hagen Danner interview tomorrow. On Thursday, we sit down and we chat with Jamie Campbell. So that'll be our Friday episode. Very excited to have a Blue Jays insider and, of course, the host of Blue Jays Central, Jamie Campbell of Sportsnet, joining us. Very excited about that. Thanks again, everybody. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.